Glory be unto the Most High God this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to his holy name this morning. For he is the mighty one. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be unto the Most High God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to his mighty name on this morning. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Lift up your voices. Let forgiveness live in these hearts, God. Let forgiveness. 
forgiveness live in these hearts, God. Let forgiveness dwell in us, oh God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we welcome you, oh God, to have your way with the musicians, God. Have your way with the praise team, God. Have your way in the media, God. Have your way with every member, God. With every guest, God. Have your way, God. Here on earth, as it is in heaven, breathe upon us that we may be able to be strong and courageous. Remove from us, God. Dive us temptation, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, God. Remove from us, God. Lust and perversion, laziness, pain in our body, the love of sin. Remove from us, God. A lying tongue, God. Oh, Lord. Remove from us procrastination, God. Bitterness and anger, God. Confusion, God. Distractions, God. Let us be who you want us to be. And we will forever give your name the glory. We will forever give your name the honor. And we will forever give your name the praise. We welcome you, God, to have your way on today. We welcome you, God, to send a fresh anointing in this place. We welcome you, God, to send your rhema word in this place. We welcome you, God, to transform us by the renewing of our mind. We welcome you, God, to build us up to be who you want us to be, God. We welcome you, O oh Lord, to free us on today, God, from dangers unseen and seen, God. Oh, but we welcome you, God, to break up generational curses. We welcome you, God, to come against the foul ground. We welcome you, God, to come against territorial demons, God. Lord, cast down every imagination and thought that wants to rule over this ministry. For we are the ambassadors and we are the sheep of your pasture. We shall take on and possess everything that you have ever released, that that you have spoken, that that you have decreed, that that you have declared. And we shall be everything that you want us to be. And Lord, we say thank you this morning. 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 It is in the name of Jesus that we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel a heaviness on today. I don't know if you feel it or not, but I can feel it. And anything that's heavy stagnates the move of God. So whatever you came up in here with, I want you to run to this altar and I want you to wipe your hands on this altar as a symbolization that you are wiping yourself clean from all of that that you are wrestling with. Get on this altar and begin to free yourself from those that cause us not to be the sons of daughters of 
of righteousness, God. Lord, Lord, here we are. And we ask right now that you, Lord, God, will free us, your people, your children, God. Lord, we ask, oh, God, that you release, God, righteousness, holiness, sanctification, God, healing, God, deliverance, God, power, strength, and the authority to walk in who you have called us to be. Oh, Lord, help us, for we need you. We need you to forgive us, God. We need you to forgive us, God. We need you to forgive us, God. We need you to show your mercy, God. We need you to help us, God. We need you, God, to lighten the load, God. If that's your will, oh, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, oh, God. Here we are, God. I come to the most And we ask right now, God, that you will forgive. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, oh, God. I come to the ocean. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Mighty one. Hallelujah. Mighty one. Glory. Hallelujah. We worship yes, you. Jesus. Mighty one. Mighty one, we worship you. Mighty one, mighty one, we worship you. Can y'all help me say a simple song? Mighty one, mighty one. We worship, we worship you. Help me say it, mighty one. Mighty one, mighty one. Simple song, we worship, we worship you. Come on, let's say it, let's get on the court, mighty one. Mighty one, mighty one. We worship you. For you alone are worthy of the highest praise with all my heart. For you alone are worthy of the highest praise with all my heart. Let me say it. For you alone are worthy of. worship you we worship you mighty one mighty one mighty one we worship you we worship for you alone for you alone are worthy worthy of the highest praise highest praise with all my heart for you alone, for you alone, are worthy of the highest praise with all my heart. For you alone, are worthy of the highest praise with 
Father God, as we are on this altar, God, we surrender our will for your will. And God, we thank you for confirmation. Oh, God. For you alone are only worthy. So, God, we thank you for turning it around. And God, we forgive ourselves on this altar. Send your refreshing. God, you know that some of us are in a dry place. We've been trying to make sense of everything that has happened to us, but God, today, we are on this altar. Because we need a touch for you. So God, we ask this morning that you would show yourself strong and mighty. And we thank you for turning around for us right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Mighty one, mighty one. We worship you. Mighty one, mighty one, we worship, we worship you, we worship, listen, mighty one, help me say it, we worship you, we worship you, for you alone are worthy of the highest praise with all my heart for you alone are worthy of the highest praise with all my heart come on for you alone keep the cameras up here worthy of the highest praise Listen, God is about to turn your situation around. The reason she's walking you is because I heard the scripture, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death and what many have thought they meant for evil. I hear the Lord saying he's about to turn it around on your behalf and you ain't got to worry because after today, your whole situation is going to change and God said you ain't got to fight. You ain't got to argue for vengeance is mine, said the Lord, and the Lord is concerned about you. So as you walk, you're walking out of that dark place. Depression can't hold you. Fear can't keep you, for God's hand is on your life. Come on, come on, come on. Let's give God a praise. Come on, praise God with him. For you alone, for you alone are worthy of the highest praise. Are worthy of the highest praise with all my heart. Come on, for you alone are worthy of the highest praise. Come on, for you alone are worthy of the highest. Are worthy of the highest praise in all my heart. For you alone. Alone. Are worthy of the highest praise. Might not work. With all my heart. For you alone. For you alone. Are worthy of the highest praise. With all my heart, for you alone, I worthy of the highest praise. With all my heart, for you alone, I 
Everybody, for you are worthy of the highest praise of my heart. For you alone, you alone are worthy worthy of the highest praise. Come on, for you alone. our God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's bless our God. Come on. If he's really worth of all the praise, let me hear it. Come on. Come on. Come on. I dare you to praise him like you already got the breakthrough. Hey, 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 hey. Like you already got the miracle. Come on. Open up your mouth, Zion. Hey! Already got it. Come on, open up your mouth. Already got the breakthrough. Come on, Zion. You better open up your mouth. Heaven is voice activated. Come on, give him a praise. I'm going to give you about 45 more seconds. To find your praise. Hallelujah. This is the hour of your breakthrough. This is the hour of your breakthrough. Come on. You got to praise them. Listen, I want to let you know. I did not come to play with the devil today. So if you want to play with the devil and let him continue to wreak havoc in your life, you can exit the door. I need about 25 to 30 people in here to really begin to give God a praise. 
like he's worthy. Come on. He kept you. He kept your mind. He kept your body. Come on. You ain't in charge of Lakeside. I dare you to praise him. Like he's done something for you. Hallelujah. I'm not moving till we till we develop a praise to let the enemy know we mean business. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, bless our God. Bless him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. Amen. Listen, there's a simple song by Ty Tribbett. It's called I Need You. Anybody need God this morning? Yesterday we finalized our very you know what yesterday we finalized our first member since we started this ministry amen and it was bittersweet and we thank God when we celebrate the life of mother Effie Crutcher Killian come on let's bless God for her. amen you can start playing it listen one thing about it is you never know how much you mean to people until times like this happen yesterday we got word from all over the country people were here from all over the country they knew me and lady and we didn't even mother Effie was calling all across the United States and telling them about her pastor and his wife in the obituary they named all the kids and she had our names there come on you don't know how much you mean to people and she had wrote out what she wanted to say in her obituary and it's just bittersweet but we know that God knows best amen so we celebrate her life she always cooked for me and lady and whoever we invited in we thank God for so we're, we're creating a proclamation this week that our fellowship hall will be called the Effie Crutcher Fellowship Hall amen because she liked to cook and she took care of us. And so we celebrate our life. We're going to sing a couple of songs with you all. Today is a different type of day because we're about to possess the land. See, so y'all don't know when to shout. And I want to let the devil know that when he thought that God couldn't, God did. And on Tuesday of this week, we'll be closing on our property. See, one thing I know about God is man will close their hand. But when the man closed their hand, God said, I'll open up a window and pour you out a blessing that you don't even have room enough. Guess what? We're going to close. And God will do much more than that. Y'all see what he did. Turn the light on just so they can see what happened in here. Y'all see what God, y'all. You can't tell me what my God can't do. Amen. Guess what? I'm telling you. When we began on this journey to ownership, after we started, God, a weekend, God told me one thing, and I told my wife when he said it. He said, nobody will be able to get the glory but me. And two weeks ago, I was sitting in my living room like, God, how are you going to do this? And next thing you know, people start giving. Y'all ain't hear me. 
Next thing you know, things just start coming together. And on Tuesday, listen, listen, this is what I'm going to do. I told my wife, I said, I'm going to put on my bishop shirt and my suit and I'm going to go in and sign them papers. And guess what? Nobody did it but God. How can $86,000 appear out of nowhere? Nobody. And when the enemy look at you and say, it can't happen. God say, I'm going to prove the doubters wrong. Stop. And before 30 days was up, was up who did it who did it who did it who did it so so Tuesday we're gonna close We 5,000 short of our goal, but I believe God. That by Tuesday morning, when I couldn't figure it out myself, when I didn't understand, he told me he was going to do it. So today a different service, so I came to celebrate. I don't know about y'all. Y'all might came to spectate, but I came to celebrate. I got my daughter here. I know she's sanctified. If she'll celebrate, I'm good. But tell your neighbor, I came to celebrate, not to spectate. I came to congratulate. Because if God did it for embassy, he did it for all of us. So it is true. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The good thing that God got prepared. Listen. It's already prepared. You better hit me in here. It's already prepared. The way is already made. Provision is already released. Better yet, it's already done. Now y'all understand why we say, For you alone are worthy of the highest praise. With all, with all my heart. It sounds different. Wait a minute. It's different when you know he's worthy. See, sometimes... You got to remind yourself that he is word. All oh, my heart for you alone are worthy of the highest praise. With all my heart. Come on, bless God in this place. So watch this. So. When I, when I was at a bad place and trying to figure out, God, how is you going to do this? That Ty Tribbison ministered to me. Right? And I began to silently in a place of fear because I was like, God, I done told folks that we finna purchase this property and I don't see how we're going to do it right now. My faith didn't waver, but it was just like, okay, God, this owe you. Because I didn't want to be an embarrassment to God or to his people. And I began to call on the Lord and say, God, you got to do it. He said, don't worry about it. I expected money to come from this place. And I got partners and we got people we connected with. I expected them to help. They didn't help. And guess what? I was like, wow. But God said, because I want to show you that, I, that I'm with you. 
And if I be for you, I'm more than a world. You hear me, Asian? If God be for you, it don't matter what's against you. It is more than the world against you. And they began to minister me. And I said, Lord, you are so That's not the right key. Give me another song we can say. Come on, let's bless God. Come on, let's bless God. We got to get something that we can do. You need me to turn that mic up? Amen. Come on, let's bless God one more time. Give us a song. Give us ladies' song. We'll sing a ladies' song. Man, that song with Shana Wilson. You don't know it? You don't know it? All right, get up and sit down. Come on, let's bless our God. Come on, Tia, just keep playing. Let's bless our God. Hey man, y'all can sit down because you may tell you what the devil would not get the glory and you don't leave out the sanctuary. You can have a seat, young man. The devil would not get the glory for this service. Come on, let's bless our God. At a time like this, we not finna play with no devil. I'm not finna play with no. I got too much to thank God for. Did to play with, a, with anything the enemy want to do. And what we got to start recognizing is some of this stuff is just demonic. I'm just telling you. When it's a time of elevation, the enemy want to come in. Guess what? You got to shut it down. Because if you don't shut it down, you'll be headed somewhere else. But we got to go or go to me. And we got a God to glorify. So if y'all don't mind, just for about 15 seconds, let's praise our God. Come on. Let's praise our God. Let's praise our God. Come on, let's bless him. We gotta praise through whatever we whatever go. Come on, let's praise them. Let's shut it down. Amen. Amen. I refuse to give the devil any inch. I'm not playing with no devil. I don't care, demon, I don't care who is in. You got to get, you're going to get up out of here today. You got to leave today. You are not welcome here. We come against the spirit of offense. This is God's place. Come on, y'all need to be praying in here. This is God's place. I refuse in a moment like this to get... No, 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 no. You can't, you can't win because God is in the business today. Restoration happens. Y'all ain't ready. It's some relationships about to be restored today. We serve the devil. Notice you can't have us. You can't have our family. You can't have, where y'all at? Y'all need to be praying. You can't have our kids. So we serve the devil. Notice we got the victory. Come on, bless God. Bless him. That's right. I need some ready folks. I need that fifth row back there all over the church. I need some ready folks today. Amen. Because only God can do it. You better 
to find your praise and stay right there where your praise is. You got to forget who beside you, who in front of you, who around you, and just begin to praise God in your personal way. I command every everything under the sound of my voice in this house to come subject to the power of God. Everything that has exalted itself over the power of God, we bring you down. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of stronghold. So right now we pull down every... Begin to pull down stronghold. Every stronghold in our life, in the life of our ministry, we pull down right now. Cast down every imagination. Come on, you got to tell your thing that you've been thinking, that's been trying to exalt itself, that's been trying to instill fear. You got to go. We cast down every imagination. And we call on the name of God. What's his name? And we call on the name of God. And we call on the name of God. Y'all know his name? What's God's name? What's his name? Call on the name of God. Come on, we call. We call on the name. I don't think y'all know his name. Jesus, 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 come on, Jesus, Jesus, we call on the name of God, Jesus, Jesus, where y'all at, Jesus, Jesus, wait a minute. There is no name under heaven by which men can be saved except the name of Jesus. He said, I am the way. It ain't your way. It ain't your mama way. But it's she, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you don't know the name of God, the name of God was personified in human flesh and that name is Jesus so I need some people in here to really get it in their spirit as we call on the name of God Jesus I can't hear you Jesus call on the name of God what is the name Jesus 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 y'all gotta say it like you mean it Jesus as we call on the name of God come on Jesus we make a provider Healer, Jesus, healer, Jesus, healer, Jesus, we call on the... I know. Some of y'all seem like y'all tired. And if you're tired, I want to tell you. And we call on the name of God. Gee, we make a miracle worker, deliverer, reconciler. Yes, my Savior. Call on the name of God. We make a miracle worker, deliverer. A bomb in Gilead. Call his name. Call his name. Every knee 
shall bow every tongue confess nobody greater nobody higher unrivaled king we called on the name of God Jesus 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 Jesus, Jesus, as we call on the name of God, Jesus, you might as well get used to it. If you get tired of this, don't go to heaven, because this all is going to be all day. As we call on the name of God. As we call on the name of God. Come on. Jesus. You got to get strong with this. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. As we call on the Let me hear them. What y'all say? Come on. You got to get strong. Y'all got to sound like an army. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, as we call on the name of, what's his name? Say it like you mean it. Put some bass in your voice. Say it with your chest. Come on, say it. Like he can heal you. Like he can deliver you. As we call on the name of God. Listen, the Bible says demons tremble. So I want some demons to be scared today. So as they are ministering, as we call on the name of God, Jesus. If you get nervous, it's got to go. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, as we call on the name of God, call on the name of God, we call on the name of God, call on the name of God. Listen, for those of you that have been in a dark place, I want to let you know I just seen the sun rising on your situation. And even though it's been dark and even though it's been ugly, God is about to let the sun arise on your situation. And I'm telling you, it's beautiful. In the midst of the sun rising, God is going to give you beauty for your ashes. Everything that you thought them burned up, your marriage is over with, your, your friends done left you. Guess what? God, I'm about to give you beauty for your ashes. You better thank God for beauty. That means that you can look better than you ever look. You're going to be able to thank God. You're going to have a testimony. Thank God I don't look like what I've been through because he's gave me beauty for my ashes. But this is the best part. That same scripture says he's going to anoint you. Because he's going to give you the oil. Y'all ain't me. Y'all got to know when to shout. He's going to give you the oil of joy. That means you're about to have a different level of anointing. That means you're going to have to have a different level of praise. That means you're going to have a different level. That means you're about to 
of joy. And I done heard you in the spirit saying, I just want to be happy. Well, I want to let you know happiness is temporary. Because you can wake up happy about 12 noon. Them kids make you so mad. You say, forget happiness. But it's something about the joy of the Lord. The Bible declares that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I need y'all to get in the prophetic. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Look at your neighbor and say, it's our strength. God is about to give you a new level of anointing. You better hit me in here. And I want to just preach and prophesy over you just for a few minutes that God is about to turn your situation around. And I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how long you've been dealing with it. It's about to turn around in your favor. I wish I had about 30 people that just start turning around right now. And every time you turn around, that means that that situation is lining up. And when you get back to your house, when you get back to your job, it's going to look like what God told you it's supposed to look like. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's turning around for me. Y'all got to learn how to preach. Tell your neighbor, it's turning around for me. Y'all too slow in here this morning. You better get you some Holy Ghost down on the inside. That just say that God is about to move on my behalf. And every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Now I want you to preach it like it's you up here. And say, neighbor, oh neighbor, it's turning around for me. You're going to learn how to preach today. I want you to look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, it's turning around for me. You got to learn when to shout. I want to give you one more chance. And y'all better be ready. Go out. We're going to shout and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, they ain't got it yet. Say, neighbor, oh neighbor, say, neighbor, oh neighbor, it's turning Y'all don't know when to shout. I understand y'all ain't been through nothing. I wish I had a few people that had been through something. That know what it is like. When you asking God, God, how am I going to make it out of this? If you've been through a situation like that, you will say, neighbor, oh neighbor, it's turning around for me. 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 Come on. It's turning around. That's right. We don't need no music. 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 It's turning around for me. If you came for regular church, you should have stayed at home. Because the Bible said praise is comely for the upright. I dare you just for about 10 seconds, give God your best praise.
So I see y'all can't shout. They praise the God over there. That's a breakthrough happening. It's turning around for me. It's turning around for me. Now praise them like you mean it. Come on. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Let everything that have breath. Come on, praise him. I'm trying to get you prepared for heaven. Because... That's right, Nicole. Praise him. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil tried, but he didn't win. Because God turning around for me. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. I don't even want you to sit down. Because God is about to do something on this week. That's going to blow our minds. If you want to play, you can come play now if you got your spirit right. But God is going to do something that's about to blow our mind. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this week will be a mind blown. He must didn't hear me. He must didn't hear me. This week, look at him and say, neighbor, this week will be a mind blowing week. Come on, praise him. He must didn't hear me. All right. So now we're moving from present tense. I like that. To future tense now. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. So I need you to shift right quick. Y'all don't mind shifting. Just shift with me right quick and we're moving from present where we just said he's turning it around for us to the future where he turned it around. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all don't know when it's out. He turned it around for me. He turned it around for me. He is all right. He turned it around for me. He turned it around for me. It's all right. He turned it around for me. Tell your neighbor. It's already done. Turn it around. It's already done. 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 He turned it, turned it around for me. He turned it. He turned it. He turned it. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Turn it around for me. Amen. You can be seated if you want to. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's all you're missed out. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. 
It's already done. It's already done. Why? He turned it around for me. Turn it around for me. He turned it around for me. He turned it around for me. me. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. done. Turn it around for me. All right. All right. Thank God for our musicians. Let's bless God for them. All right. It's already done, y'all. It's already done. It's already done. One thing I learned about breakthrough is this. When you're going through, it seems like it's a long process. Y'all hear me? Going through seems like a long process. But after you break through, you look back and like, that wasn't long at all. Y'all don't, y'all don't get it. I want to let you know that I don't care how long it's been. You're about to break through. Better yet, I'm sorry. I forgot. We are no longer in present tense. We are in future tense. It's already broke through. You already own the house. Your relationships are already restored. Your bank account is already big. Y'all didn't catch that. Look at your neighbor and say, it's big. It's already done. I don't care, no B. I don't care how long it took. Once you break through, the only thing you think about is, God, you did it. Embassy, God did it. And you ain't seen nothing. This is about to be a chain chain reaction. You got to get in the spirit. You know how you ever set up a bunch of dominoes on the table like this? And next thing you know, you got them all set up and pretty. And you just hit that one. And that one hit another. And that one, see, y'all don't know when to shout. That one hit another. And next thing you know, all the dominoes fall. Guess what? Everything is about to fall in place. Y'all better, you better. It's not just about the fall, but it's about the fall in place. That means that whatever it's supposed to be, it's going to be where it's supposed to be. Prophesy to yourself, say everything in my life is about to fall in place. Everything concerning me is about to line up. Everything that God has said about me is about to show up because I waited, because I didn't give up, because I realized the race wasn't given to who fast, but it was given to who can last the longest. And I lasted, so it's about to fall in So, so I'm going to give you some quick instruction because things that are about to happen in your house in your life are about to happen so fast. It's about to change so fast that you're going to look around and say, when did it happen? I'm operating, I'm moving in it and I didn't even see it happen. It's because you got to focus your attention on the right thing. So God told me to tell you, as we get ready to cross over, watch this. After the end of this week, we get ready to cross over from July to August. Seven is the number of completion. The seven month, but eight is the number of new beginning. It's some things, y'all better hear me, that you've been praying for, that you got seed in the ground for. I'm telling you, August is just going to start popping up. You're going to say, wow, I was waiting on this three years. It'll pop up in three days. Y'all ain't ready in here. I've been waiting and praying, and God turn it around because it's about to happen. I'm prophesying in here. It's about to happen to everything that you put on your heart for God to do in this month. He's going to do it and it's going to manifest in the month of August for eight is the number of new beginnings.
this and I hear the Lord say though you have been waiting though you've been crying dry your eyes because everything you asked me for I heard you the first time and I'm about to answer y'all better hear me God said I'm about to answer so it's about to show up so God told me to tell you as you prepare I see y'all fan and don't worry about it It's a little warm. Hell hotter than this, though. I just want to let you know. Hell, wait. If you don't like this, don't go to hell. You don't like praising, don't go to heaven. If you don't like hot, don't go to hell. You can pick your choice. I think I'd rather praising, praising be warm right here than to go to hell. But watch this. As everything is about to line up and everything is about to fall in place, I heard the Lord say that I need to get a few things in your life to be key components that you got to grab now and carry with you. As the children of Israel got ready to possess the land, Moses gave them a set of instructions to hear to so that when they get over to the promised land, number one, they won't forget God. They won't forget that God did it. But there's some things that will keep you along the way. Y'all better hear me. In Joshua chapter one, he told Joshua to remember the word of the Lord. Look to do everything written that in. Then your way will be prosperous and you will have good success. To the children of Israel, he told them that too but what happens to us is a lot of time God moves and once God moves we forget about God y'all better hear me in here that's why some of your blessings have been held up because God know your heart y'all better hear me in here God know if I really gave you that 50,000 you weren't going to do what you said you were going to do before you got it because you know how we talk oh if I get this I'm going to do this then you get it be sitting there like um so God says I'm going to give you a set of instructions that's going to keep you as you possess the land. That means that the church, the church, our ministry is about to move from tabernacle to temple. Y'all, y'all, y'all need to read your Bible. So when the children of Israel had tabernacles, they were, that was a place that they took with them everywhere they go. They took God with them everywhere. And instead of having a temple, they had a tent. Embassy, y'all don't know. For the last eight years, that's how we've been. We go to this place and we go to that place and we'll go to that place. But the whole time we were in search of the promised land. Y'all better hear me. The whole time we were waiting saying, God, we're going to take you everywhere we go. We in the tabernacle. We thank you for what you've been doing. But God, you're leading our leader somewhere. We don't know what it looked like. We don't know where it's going. But God, we're going to trust you inside of y'all. Where y'all letting in? We're going to trust you inside of them so along the way it's been many that came and many that left it's many that couldn't see the vision it's many couldn't see what God was doing but I want to tell you that remain faithful you that transitioned when we transitioned you could have went somewhere else but you stayed right here that God said there's a blessing upon your name and upon your house because you weathered come on here and here you weathered the storm a praise goes right there come on and so I pronounce a blessing over your house that you should not lack, that you should not want, that you should not go through. No more days of struggling, even though a thousand may fall on your side. Tender, it will not come nigh thee. So I command the blessing of the Lord. Up, oh, come on, you got to know when the praise God. I command the blessing of the Lord upon you and upon your household and your children and your children's children. Now come on, give God a praise for it. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, we're moving from tent and tabernacles to the temple. <sighs> Y'all just don't know how powerful that is. 
because you may tell you something I'll tell you as you go and listen to God he just gives you an idea he gives you the vision and it don't make sense he said bro next I need you to launch a ministry I said okay God I'll go do it he showed me a church building but we didn't even have a church building he showed me chairs we didn't even have chairs he showed me an organ we didn't even have organ he showed me drums we didn't even have drums he showed me people we didn't even have people the only thing we had was a vision and a word from the Lord I feel like Abraham today that said get away from your kinfolk go to a place that I will show you and I will make your name great and I'm gonna bless you and I'm gonna bless those I feel sorry for those that uncursed us because he said I will bless those y'all better know that's gonna bless you and I'm gonna curse those I don't wish bad upon nobody I'm praying for them but the word of the Lord said I will bless those that bless listen you better tell them you better be careful what you say about me so listen so we move we move we moving, we moving, we moving. People laughing. Y'all move again. It didn't make sense. Huh? We go in these places. We spend thousands of dollars and fix them up to what God has told us about. And you know what? Sometimes when you're in the journey, it don't make sense, and you feel like you're losing. But I'm gonna tell you, God is the best paymaster I know. Through all the years, through all the hurt, the pain, the, the turmoil, the laughing, the scolding, the being left for dead, guess what? God still showed up. Because what you got to realize is that people will think you're dead, but God will just hide you. NBC, you've been hidden in plain sight. They've been looking around. God had you by the brook Cherith. He was sending a raven to feed you. And you drank from the brook. But I'm telling you this morning, it's time to get up. I got another, God said, I got another place for you that's going to sustain. So look. So Abraham traveled. He traveled. He was in different places. And God told Abraham, he said, listen, everywhere your feet go, I'm giving it to you. You might go there and you can't stay, but I'm giving it to you. Y'all better hear me. He told us, everywhere y'all go, it's going to be yours. It didn't make sense. But this week I was looking through some old photos. And back in 2017, we were in this building. Y'all ain't hear me. You got to learn when to shout. Back in 2017, I preached a sermon in that gym. And we touched the walls in that gym. And we declared that this would be an apostolic house. And here it is. Y'all ain't ready in here. Here it is. Five years later. We back in this place. Where our feet walked in. Where we parked on the parking lot. And on Tuesday of this week. God came back on his word. So I want to let directors Road know. I got some land over there. I want to let Fraser know I got some land over there and make sure you stop by Airways and tell them I got some over there too and tell Brooks Road hey, I'm coming back home and go by Hollywood on your way and tell Hollywood I'm coming back and go over there and being after on Scott Street and tell them I'll be back there because everywhere you know what I ain't never forgot that's why I was wondering. I said, God, why you got us keeping all these signs? For every place we've been, we kept the sign. It's God said, I want you to remember where you were. So when you go back, it belongs to you. You know what signs represent, right? A memorial. Everywhere the children of Israel went, they raised an altar. I 
there were signs where I will alter. E Street. We got some over there too. So here it is, almost five years later. God bring us right back here. I'm gonna post the pictures Tuesday. We got the pictures in that gym. I preached a message called a sure foundation. And I told him how that when God creates a foundation, he has to first come in and move everything out. Y'all yeah. don't know how to shout. That's going to stop the foundation from being what it need to be. Come through and cut up trees and level the land out. It's been some stuff over here. It's been some folks in this building. All type of stuff that went in. But God sent us here to drive all the devil stuff out. Y'all better hear me. And we came here and we meant business and we consecrated this place and we prayed over it. And now God said, because you were faithful over a few things, I'm making you rule over many. Y'all better thank God. Come on, come on, come on. Thank him. But But this is what I want to tell you, and I'm, I'm going to be quick. I'm going to be quick. That as we get ready to, to go into this next level of ministry, it's going to happen for the ministry, and it's going to happen for your house. It's going to happen for the ministry in your house. I got to give you this, and I'm going to let you go by 11 o'clock. But there are certain things that God wants you to carry with you. All right? And so I'm going to give you one thing, and I think Lady got about two things she want to tell you that God gave her. And I want you to listen closely because you're going to need these things in the days to come uh, as we prepare. I want everybody that can to make it to the Apostolic Congress this week. Be here. Look, at, look down your row and tell them, be here. Whether you registered or not, need you here. Every night. And day services too. Day services too. We got classes from like 9 to about 11. Then we got a 12 noon service. Then you can go eat you some whatever. And I'll tell you about the fast this week because we're going to switch some things around for the fast. But I need you to be here. If you got friends and family, invite them. All right? Invite your friends and family. And I know it's hot right now, but we got a brand new air conditioning unit been sitting on top of this roof for almost three months. All right? We got one working, but the new ones will be installed tomorrow. Come on. I was, I was waiting on somebody and We've been waiting. It, yesterday we had the funeral. This place was packed. It was uh, scorching. And so tomorrow, the new unit will be on tomorrow as we prepare for this week. But there's a few things that God gave us, gave me and my wife, because this is where the ministry is going. God has sent couples here, right? It's married couples, and God is about to raise up the married couples in this place. Some people finna get married. Some people that been married finna have the best marriage of their life. Amen. What you got to do is you got to bring it together in the house. Don't go try to get what you need from the world. You need to get it from the house. Because God, listen, if you don't know no other answer, guess what the answer is? God is the answer. Me and my wife, been, we are uh, doing this board certified Christian counseling thing to be certified for Christian counseling. And guess what it's teaching us in these, psychology, in these classes we're taking? That the answer is God. We're going everywhere else. But the answer is God. Your kids acting crazy? Guess what you need? God. in a stick. Because it's just foolishness. The Bible says foolishness is in the heart of the child. But the rod of correction. And guess what? It's going to be some rod of correction around my house. Because I don't let them get away too long. Now they grown, grown. So... I ain't finna hit you with my fist because you go call the police on me. But guess what? You finna get this stack, this bat. And police come, it's my house. He go run his house. Right? But it's, it's, it's God that fixes it. Too many times do we go everywhere else. The whole time, 
And we wonder why it's still not working. The reason it's not working because you're going everywhere else except God. You go to God, he'll fix it. He can fix it right. You know, some of this other stuff will tame it. You'd be like, okay, it worked. No, it didn't work. Because God reveals the heart. Psychology teaches you about behavior and all of that and, and, and proclivities and stuff like that. But guess what? God said, I'll go past that. What she say? And she's a psychology major. She'll tell you, he right. She's she been to graduate. That's my daughter. She's been to graduate next month. She's a psychology major. And she'll tell you. But God goes pat now. It's good. Psychology, I love it. I, I think I, you know, I, I might go back to school and be a doctor of psychology and let you come sit on my couch and talk and we get it fixed. But when at the end of the day, I'm going to take you back to Jesus because he's the one that can fix it. He can fix it, fix it. Y'all hear me? Fix it, fix it. So there are certain things that I want to make sure that we got as we go into this new place. So I'm going to bring lady for about five minutes. She ain't going to scream. She ain't going to holler. She's going to get up here and she's going to tell you what God gave her. Because God is doing a new thing. Right? And so God gave her a couple things. She's looking at me like, What? not be me no she gonna be her but I want her to bring what God gave her and I want her to say it so we can hear it too many times we get caught up in the emotions of things and we miss everything we just see somebody jump and scream we like yeah what they say I don't know but it sounded good that's how we be right you know how it is in the black community they say when you see one black person run run it's the same way in the church. You see everybody. Ah! So what the preacher preach about? I don't know, but we did some dancing. That's finna stop around here. You finna get that word. Come on. Let's bless God. Because let me tell you what, dancing don't change you. It just gets you sweaty and you lose a couple pounds. But what changes you is the word. So come on, put your hands together for Lady Brownnecks. She's gonna give you a few things that God gave her for us. Come on, stand on your feet and re receive the woman of God. Bless you. Amen. Glory be unto God on today. You all may be seated. Three things. Three things. Just three things. Your first scripture will be coming from Psalms 96. And he told me earlier this week as I was sitting in the desk, sitting in my office working. He said, oh, sing unto me a new song. Sing unto me the Lord, all you in the earth. I kept on saying, Lord, sing unto you. What do you mean? What are you saying? Then some things transitioned and transpired on this week. And I was in the kitchen and I was praying. And God said that if we will master discernment and stop talking so much, we would get it. I said, huh? He said, while I was in the kitchen, master discernment and talk less I said but God I ain't been doing no talking he says all my people been talking to the fact where you over talk what you supposed to be seeing you can't see the wolf from afar off. You can't see those wolves that's in sheep clothing because you're talking too much he said that if my people will master discernment, which is wisdom, you will be able to differentiate who's real and who's not. Who's for the kingdom and who is not for the kingdom. If you will give it time and you let them talk, you will be able to see the mass, the people, the faces behind the mass. I said, Father, why is it that every time I turn around, I see your manservant going through heartache. I see your manservant or your woman servant going through an assassination and attack. He said that if my people will master 
the gifting of discernment. And if my people would be quiet, you will be able to see who they really are. Because the enemy sent people your way and they be in sheep clothing and they get close to you. So when they begin to open up their mouths, the people begin to believe what they're saying because they've been connected to you. They've been standing on the right side and on the left side of you. And so they understand that they are with you. But if my people would get wisdom if my people would be quiet sometime and allow these men and women of God to talk allow these men and women of God that's supposed to be if you allow them the time to be their self you will be able to see who they really are you won't have to worry about no assassination and getting involved in the wrong type of people or the wrong type of partnership because you will be able to discern and you will be able to sing a new song unto the most high God because we sing in songs people of God and we sing in the same stuff after the same stuff after the same stuff we're saying Lord why why are they attacking me why are they hurting me why are they doing me like this because you didn't take the time to discern who you have partnered with who you have connected with who you have allowed to be a part of your ministry a part of your life a part of the business and a part of what i have given you it is my prayer that the sons of daughter the sons and daughters of jesus christ will master the gift of discernment and i looked up discernment and it said the ability to judge and to judge well that's wisdom for we perish for the lack of knowledge and we perish for not taking the time to get to know who we are connecting to what did you say I'm saying be quiet stop saying this is my friend stop saying this is my son stop saying that this is my daughter stop saying that they are a part of the membership they are a part of the vision that God has given you and allow God to go through allow them allow God to let them to go through the filtering process what you mean the filter his process where he began to expose he began to reveal he began to show them who show you who they are he said if you were given time time is a revealer of all things so while we're going into this new season we embarking among this great gift we possess in the land learn to discern and while you discerning stop singing that same old tired song to God talking about what they did and how they did and you allow yourself to get in God so you can measure who you connecting with and who you are running with because some people you don't supposed to be running around here with because the enemy sends them to be a distraction and to get you off guard and to cause you not to meet the mark or to get to where you're supposed to get. Because you know, this is my son. This is my daughter. This is my friend. This is my partner. How could they do this? So you spend so much time trying to heal, trying to get free, trying to figure out why. Did they do this to me? But if you had just taken the time to discern and allow wisdom to be the head of what you manage or what you got going on, you won't have to worry about that. I said, Lord, ever since we have been in ministry, we have seen them come and we have seen them go. And I want to let you know, Embassy, we're going to continue to see them come and we're going to continue to see them go. But it is our responsibility as they come into this place to love them with the love of Christ Jesus and give it time. Don't position nobody. Don't give nobody no titles. Don't allow nobody to do what they want to do. Come and cause you to stop doing what God wants you to do. You give them time so that God can reveal to you who they are and where they supposed to be. If they ain't supposed to be in your life, then don't allow them in your life. If they supposed to be a part of the ministry, a part of the business, then you open it up. But you ain't going to know that until you gave it enough time. The word of God says be anxious for nothing. But in all things in prayer supplication, make your request known unto the Lord. It's okay for you to say, Lord, who are they? 
Where shall they be in my life? How are they supposed to be connected to me? How do I handle them? It's okay for us to take our time. It's okay for us to seek God. It's okay for us to wait on God. We have to stop being anxious. And, we, and because we know it's a need, we start positioning people and we start allowing them to be when they should have never been. And so we deal with turmoil. We deal with heartbreak. We deal with frustration. We deal with weariness. We deal with uh, bitterness. We deal with hatefulness. Because we have allowed people who ha should have never been to be. The last thing God gave me was repent. Three days. He said, sing unto the Lord a new song. He said, master discernment, which is wisdom. And then he said, he said, be quiet. master discernment and be quiet. And the third thing he said was repent. I was laying in the bed in between woke and sleep. He said, all of us have a need to repent. I said, huh? I'm talking about I'm asleep, but I can hear him. He said, all of us have a need to repent. So repent. And if you allow yourself the opportunity to repent, your song going to change. Your wisdom level going to change. How you uh, uh, talk going to change. Your perception of life is going to change. You will no longer perceive things the way that you want to perceive them. But you will perceive them how God want you to perceive them. You don't have to worry about all the heartaches and all the turmoil and trial. Only thing you have to do is repent. And God Almighty will lead you out of whatever you have allowed yourself to come subject to. So repent. It's okay to say I messed up. I fell short. For Apostle Paul said the good that he would do, he don't do. But the evil that he don't want to do, that's what he do. And that's us. We haven't arrived. We have not made it. But if we will allow ourselves to come subject to the principles of God, we will understand that every single day, repentance shall come off of our tongue. Repentance shall come out of our mouth. Just saying, Lord, Lord, forgive me for I have fallen short. I talk too much. I indulge in something that I should have never indulged in. Even though I ain't say nothing, I didn't correct it. It's the little foxes that destroy us the vine. It's the little bitty things that we do or don't do that causes us to be separated from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I'm not just saying you. I'm talking about me. It don't matter what level you are. It don't matter how anointing you are. It don't matter how gifted you are. Come to the understanding that repentance is needed so that we could be able to be everything that God wants us to be. And don't just do it today because ladies say it, God said, but you do it every single day of your life. Every time that God shows you you, you repent. And you ask God for your forgive, for his forgiveness. And he's going to honor it. And he's going to make it clean. He's going to straighten it up. He's going to give you a new song. So you ain't got to sing that same tired song no more. You ain't got to go and do what you used to do because you're going to become a new creature in Christ Jesus every time you give God time. Repent. Master wisdom and learn how to close this mouth. Amen. Amen. Let's bless God for that. Hey, hallelujah. She did that. Amen. Amen. That, that's, that's part of your instructions as we go into this new season. I know I got 12 minutes, right? So what did the woman of God say? The woman of God said, sing unto the Lord a new song. Said, get your discernment in check. You got to discern. And discernment is the Hebrew word. In Hebrew is wisdom. Did y'all know that? Discernment is wisdom where you can sit back and you can say, you know what? Mother F, you say this. Something wrong with that milk. She would say, something wrong with that milk. You know what that means? That means something ain't right. And that's 
discernment when you can sit back and you can judge things and judge people. You ever heard that? I got the gift of discernment. That's when you can look at, in the spiritual sense, you can tell what's evil and what's good. But you need some spiritual and some natural. Because there's some folks that come, they got good game. Y'all don't, y'all ain't never met none. I know some folks got some scriptures. With script you under the table, you be like, my God, they anointed. Guess what? Demons. Don't be fooled by gifts. She's saying that don't be fooled by gifts. Because the Bible tells us gifts come without repentance. Y'all better hear that. And a lot of times we're saying gifts come without, no, 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 no. That means don't be fooled. Just because they can prophesy. Just because they, they can speak in tongues. Don't, don't be fooled by that because that will mess you up. You'll be talking to a gifted person that demonically possessed. And next thing you know, you'll be wondering why you're in the mess that you're in. Right? So she said, master discernment. And the main thing is repent. And I got one last thing for you all to add into what she got. And that's coming from Psalms 27. And Psalms 27 says, I like it, the first three Three verses said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So I want to tell you, as we get ready to go into this new place, a lot of times fear comes up because you know what fear is? Fear comes when you don't know. Fear comes as a result of not knowing the outcome. People are afraid of death. Guess why they're afraid of death? Because you don't know what's going to happen after you die. So that's where fear comes. Fear comes when you don't know how this thing is going to play out. You've been in a relationship for 50 years and next thing you know, y'all split up. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to be in fear because you're going to be like, wait a minute, how am I going to do this by myself? Fear comes because you're trying to figure out how can I be alone? How am I going to survive being alone? Fear comes when, you got, when God is telling you to leave this job and you want to stay there because you've been there 20 years, but God is telling you to leave. Then you're like, well, I, don't, I pay my house note with this job. I, this job take, but fear comes in because you don't know the outcome. It's, it's, it's a, a part of us as being believers. It's a part of us as being human that we need to know everything. But look what David says in Psalms 27. The Lord is my what? Light. Fear comes to put a darkness over you. Anybody ever felt like that? All right, I can keep y'all another 30 minutes since y'all distracted. Fear comes to put a darkness over you. But David said, the Lord is my what? Because light and darkness cannot mix. It can be dark, but when light shows up, darkness has to go. Y'all better hit me in the Holy Ghost. That'll preach right there. When light shows, I don't care what it is in your life. If it's a dark area, only thing you got to do is invite the Lord in. Because the Lord is my what? Light. So he, if you invite him in, see, that's your problem. You trying to do it. As we go into this new place, guess what the Lord said? David said, we need to make the Lord our light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I looked up the word. I'm telling you, God give me a new word. I looked up the word salvation in Hebrew. You know what the, uh, salvation in Hebrew means? Deliverer. We be talking, you need to get delivered. You know what that really means? You need to get saved. We trying to make everything so mystical and magical when the only thing you need to do is say, God, here is my heart. Here is my body. Do what you want to do. And if you really mean that, guess what? The light will come in. All darkness got to what? The Lord is my light and my what? Salvation. He is the one that delivers. So as you go into this new season, don't be fearful. Just know that God is going to illuminate everything and he's going to save you. If you ain't saved, I'm telling you, you finna walk into a season where you're going to be saved. If you've been cussing people out every day, you're going to stop cussing. Because God is going to come in and he's going to shine that light. Every time you get ready to cuss, a light bulb going to go out. Beep. You'll be like, you know what? Never mind. All right? The Lord is the strength of my life. I want to let you know, the strength of your life is not based on what you can do, but it's God. Yeah. It's not based on what you can. Think about this. A lot of things that you thought you were in control of, 2020 to now, God showed you that you were not in control. Y'all ain't hear me in here. A lot of things that you thought you were running. Am I right or wrong? Let me know. Am I right or wrong? 2020 showed you you don't run nothing. And I don't care how much strength you had. Guess what? You couldn't stop nothing. Amen. They told you to stay at home. What you did? Amen. They told you don't go to the store after nine. What you did? Amen. But if the Lord was your strength, Amen. 
church. If the Lord was your light, he would have showed you go and stock up because he had been telling us for three years, stock up, get you plenty of gross, get you plenty of canned goods, get you plenty of non parish But he's the strength of your life. I want to let you know, your strength is not based in what you can do or your body because you can't put another cubic to your stature. You can't even count the hairs on your head because all that belongs to God. So you got to realize your strength comes from the Lord. And even when you think you weak, you got to realize that God will give you a joy when you say the joy of the Lord is my strength. And the only thing you have to do after that is wait on God. Why? Because the Bible said if you wait on the Lord, he will renew your strength. A lot of people give up on their marriages and everything else because they think they don't have no more strength. But if you just wait on God, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, just wait on God. If you begin to wait on God, what you say you can't deal with, he'll give you a different level of strength. A don't mind, I feel like preaching. He'll give you a different level of strength, a different level of power where you say that joke of still coming in here on that blue top acting a fool but guess what God I'm going to put this Holy Ghost on him I'm going to put this power on him and even when he don't know I'm going to be praying for him I'm going to put some oil in his shoes I'm going to put some oil in his hat and before you know it he's going to start changing around here because if you wait on the Lord he'll give you he'll renew so that means when all that old strength of war you know how y'all women be, uh, you do one more thing, it's over with. He tried one more time. You come in here late one more time, I promise you, uh, me and my kids gone. But when you begin to pray and wait on the Lord and say, Lord, what shall I do? God will say, I don't want you to do nothing. But start praying because they that wait shall renew their Tell your neighbor, say, you're about to get stronger. God is about to give you a new plan. God is about to make you take a little bit more. You're going to take a lick and then you're going to take on ticking. Why? Because the Bible tells me that God will never put too much on you. Then you can, he knows what you can take. Job said he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, you know what? You've been thinking it's him testing you, but it's been God trying you. Because he said, when he has tried me, I shall come forth as what? This is the polishing process. Y'all better catch this in the Holy Ghost. This is the polishing process. You think you're going to get victory? You think you're going to get the elevation? You think you're going to get to the next level just by being pretty and princy? Girl, sometimes you got to go through something. Your feet got to get dirty. Your hands got to get dirty. Sometimes you got to cry. But if you can hold on, I'll preach it by myself. If you can just hold on, God will begin to do something on the inside of you. That just means he got something that he's trying to get out of you. And sometimes you have to go through. The Lord is the strength. I'm telling you, about 20 of y'all getting some strength today. I know, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. Yesterday, you made up your mind. You said, after I go to church tomorrow, when I get back home, I don't care what the pastor say. I got time today. Y'all thought that money bag, yo, was going to kick off. I got time today. If you do anything, if you say anything, if you mess with me, I got time today. But I come to tell you that God said, I brought you right here because I'm about to give you a new strength. You're about to go a little bit further. You're about to stay a little bit longer. And I'm about to polish you. The Lord is the strength. The Lord is the strength of my David came later on and said blessed be the Lord who holded our soul in life you don't you know your soul is hoisted in the inside of your body it's God that's keeping it there if it wasn't for his hand your soul will fly right out and be gone but God is keeping you and I want to tell you right here whether you know it or not he kept you for a time like this because he's about to show himself strong and mighty he's about to fix everything concerning you because it's concerning him and I hear the Lord say today that don't be surprised that things change but in order for things to change I have to change you first and you you've been wanting everybody else to change when God said I need to change you why would I give you something new that you're gonna mess up so I need that nagging to go I need that arguing to go I need that fussing to go I need you to get to a new place in me so I'm polishing the Lord is the strength of my life who you have no reason to be afraid 
Y'all with me? Tell your neighbor, say, you ain't got no reason to be afraid. There's nothing to fear. You have no reason to be afraid. And tell them, just tell them prophetically, say, God brought you too far. He kept you too long. He kept you too long. You got a reminder. You remember back 15 years ago where you was? God done brought you too far. You're not where you used to be. Yeah, you're not, you not where you want to be. But you better thank God you're not where you used to be. And he didn't bring you this far. Can I tell you something? He didn't bring you this far to leave you. He ain't never, he ain't bring you this far. He ain't save you and clean you up and take you out of the club to bring you here so you could get talked about, so you can get ran down. He said, I got you. This is just part of your process. This is just part of your process. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, number one, he's the light in darkness. He's my deliverer. Then he's my strength. So I have no reason to fear. And when the wicked came to try to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and failed. So he's the booby trap for my enemies. Y'all better hit me. He's the booby trap for my enemies. That means when they come and plot against me, when they speak all day, I'm telling you, you better be careful. Look, you better remind the devil today. You better be careful what you say about me because God has a blessing on my life. They say, I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those that curse you. But look what he said. When the wicked, even the enemies came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. God got a way that when the devil think he got you trapped and about to offer your demise, that God will set them up that they'll fall right before your face you better hit me and when they speak that stuff that they speaking it'll come back up on them and they'll eat their own y'all better hit me they will eat their own words then he says though a lot of them shall encamp about me my heart shall not fear the war shall rise up against me this would I be confident in so God says uh, after you get ready for this new song because you've been to sing a new song in a little a new land. After you get your discernment in check, after you repent, he said, now I need you to focus on your desire. Because a lot of time, everything else in our life is lined up except our desire. Y'all better hear me. You better hear me good. Everything else is lined up except what we desire. And desire is what you have a strong want for. What you have a strong, I just need this. No, you don't. You just need Jesus. Young women, you, I, I watch young women, they get, they get in the modes, they, they see people in relationship, then they get depressed. What you getting depressed for? I feel like I need to be in a relationship. I'm tired. Everybody else has been booed up except me. What you got to realize, you got to change your desire because your desire is for the wrong thing your desire for a confidence your desire for want to be in the relationship when you can have the best relationship in the world where they ain't got to act where he ain't going to ask you no more than what he has already given you and that's a relationship with God and once you change your desire everything else will line up and that's the reason you're struggling in your flesh that's the reason you can't keep your legs closed that's the reason you can't keep your pants up it's because you ain't realized your desires in the wrong place but when you fix your desires on those things that please to God. Listen, you better ask her what David said. One thing that I desire of the Lord and that that I will seek after, that I will dwell. Y'all got to learn when to preach. That I will dwell in the house of the Lord. You got to get your desire to say, God, you know what? I can't tame this flesh. I need to stay in the house. I can't fix my feelings. I need to stay in the house. I can't clean this tongue. I need to stay in the house. So I need to change my desire to want to be in the presence of the Lord why because in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord evil can't be present in the presence of the Lord there is no darkness there is no fear so one thing you got to bring all your desires to one place I want to be in a relationship let me bring it over here I want to be married. Let me. I want to be happy. Happy is temporary. Let me bring. 
I want money. Let me bring bring all your desires to God. And you start seeking God. Everything else. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and God's righteousness. Your relationship, your desires, everything will line up. But David said, even though I went through all that, he said, one thing that I desire of the Lord. So God is saying, embassy, as we go, our desire has to be on the things of God. Can't be just so we can say we own this property, but now we got to say, God, what do you want us to do? What do we need to do with it? It's enough to say, well, we got a beautiful place. We done fixed it up. But God, what do you desire for us to do out of here? That's going to be your will and what you want for this community. But I'm going to tell you something that God told me. Don't just worry about Raleigh. But we need to be focused on the whole Memphis. Because he's got a piece of us for everybody. So now we got to say, God, make our desire your desire. Make our wants your wants. Make what you want be what we want. Let us see what you have for us. And we will do it because one thing that we desire. And that will we seek after. That we can dwell. Come on. You got to learn how to stay in the house. I know they tell you Corona out. You got to learn how to stay. How did I get saved? I stayed in the house. How, how did I get free? I stayed in the house. How did I live? I stayed because I realized I couldn't do it on my own. But it was something about the house. When I got around like believers who might have been struggling just like me, but we made each other stronger. So don't listen to the devil to tell you you don't need devil set up. I need to be around some people like me. It's the embassy. It's the perfect place for imperfect people. Because we're not asking you to be perfect. We're just asking you to have a desire to be in a how? Because our mission is to touch, train, and transform lives. And how are we going to do that if we never in the house? If we don't have a desire to see lives touched, to see lives trained, and to see lives trans. So we do this by evangelizing the lost, empowering the new and expanding the kingdom and that's what we do so listen I'm going to let you go because I don't went over one thing that I have desired of the Lord and that, that I seek after is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord the world can be so ugly but it's something beautiful about God Isaiah said it. He saw the beauty and the splendor of God. He said, when us I died, I saw the Lord in his temple. Hallelujah lifted up in his train. I saw the beauty and the splendor of God. You will see it in the house. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire. Man, that's powerful. In his temple. I can ask questions. I can get my answers. Where in the temple... For in a time of trouble, he going to put a cover over me. I won't just be outside, but he gives me a pavilion. You ever been to a pavilion? You got a whole canopy where you can find rest. In times of trouble, he hides me. In the secret place, he takes me from pavilion to tabernacle. Shall he hide me? Then he gives me a foundation because he should set me up on a rock. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies. I'm going to tell you something. August, you're not going to be walking around with your head down. God's going to lift your heads up. You're going to be looking at them folk and all that crazy stuff they're doing. Your head going to be up like this right here. They're going to be thinking that you're supposed to fall out. They're going to say, you're supposed to be crying. You're going to be like, nope, I ain't crying today. Because my head shall be lifted up over all my enemies. I'm going to let you go. Watch what it says. Therefore, will I offer... In his tabernacle, sacrifices. <laughs> to come to church for Sunday school at 8 o'clock in the morning, guess what that is? But I'm going to offer it with joy. To be at Bible study on Wednesday night, guess what? Sometime for some of us, guess what? 
If you think it's a sacrifice for you, you need to hear the conversation I have with my wife on Wednesday. Like, man, it's Wednesday already? We can cancel. But my desire is to be in the house of the Lord. So God said, I need you to get your desire lined up with what I have desired. And everything in your life will line up. Stand your feet all over the building. Amen. When y'all come in here Wednesday, I'm going to have the air so cold. You're going to go out to your car to the cold. You're going to be like, Pastor done lost his mind. Now I'm going to be sick. I'm going to have Eskimo. Amen. Lift your hands. Father God, we pray today, God, that your word that has been spoken will come alive in our heart. God, we thank you that you're going to give us a new song in a new place. And that, God, you are even opening up our discernment right now. And, God, as we repent and ask you right now to forgive us of anything that we've done outside of your will. God, cleanse us from all unrighteousness and strengthen us. But, God, most of all today, God, create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit in us. So that our desire will be what you have for us and line up what you have for your people. And God will give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise for doing it right now. In Jesus' name. Come on, bless God. We pray. Amen, amen. While you're standing, I got three things. If you don't know Jesus Christ, pardon of your sins, the doors of the church is open. Second thing I got, if you not, if you have not been baptized, we will be baptizing next Sunday. You can come. We want to baptize, take you down in Jesus' name for the remission of your sin. And lastly, if you don't have a church home, this would be a wonderful place to be a member. Come on, come on, y'all. This would be a wonderful place to say, you know what? I need a place that watches over my soul. I want to be a part of the embassy. The doors of the church is open. You can come now. Amen. We don't have none. We celebrate God. Amen. For everybody. Let's bless God for everybody. Oh, there go Brother Isaiah. Amen. Come on, Brother Isaiah. Let's bless God for Isaiah. He's one of ours. Amen. We're going to pray with him. and we, You are already family, but we want to pray with you. He's about to go to the military, y'all. Amen. When you leaving out? The night? He'll be gone August the night. He's been ready to go to the military for about ever since I've known him. And so now God has opened up the door. So we just want to pray a prayer over him right quick. You know, man, come on. I want my men to come gather around him right quick. Let's pray a prayer for our brother. May God cover him. Father God, we thank you for Brother Isaiah today, God. We thank you for his life. God, we thank you for everything that you're doing for him, God. As he stands with us, we stand with him today, God, that you will shield and protect him, that you will bring him back safely. As he goes to the military, God, that you will be a lamp and a light and a guide to his feet. We thank you for his life. God, we thank you for everything that he's been through. God, we pray for his wife, his family, that you would protect them and keep them safe. And God, even as he prepares to go in this new journey in life, that you will forever be with him, God. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's bless God for him. We love you, man. We love you. We look forward. Let me make sure you talk to him before you leave. Amen. Come on, let's get our seats together. But our visitors, would you please stand if you're a visitor? Amen. Come on, let's thank God for our visitors. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Let's thank God for our visitors. Bless you all. Can we get a mic? I would like to, can we get them a mic? I want them to tell us their name. Amen. Take the call. Bond guy, come on. Amen. Come on, let's bless God for our visitors one more time. Get another one. Amen. They're going to give you a mic. We just want you to take two mics. Yeah. Take the covers off of them. Amen. Come on, let's bless God for our visitors one more time. Amen. Listen, as you're getting your seats together, listen, you know, I mentioned earlier that we got to go. We got to reach that 5K. If you will, sow a seed towards that 5K on top of your tithing off and watch God bless you. Amen. She want to say her name? We still want to know your name, because She's going to tell you tonight. Nicole. Come on, let's bless God for Nicole. That's our God. That's Cedric, our God. Let's bless God for them. They family. And Nicole already know. I told her one time you were visited. Two times you might be a visitor, but we adopt you in. So she's family. I'm Patricia. 
Come on, let's bless God for Patricia. She family too. She done been here a little bit more, more than once. But bless you, woman of God. We love you and thank you for visiting with us. Amen. Come on, let's bless God for Ashley. Bless you, Ashley. Sharon. Sharon. Let's bless God for Sharon today. Mother Magic. And Mother, Mother. Magic. Mother Magic. Come on, let's bless God for Brother Mother Magic. Amen. Ain't that something? God sent us a mother. Yeah, and she's not a visitor. She just wanted to let y'all know who she is. That's my daughter, my other daughter. Amen. We love her. She visits with us all the time. She's graduating college here in August. Let's celebrate that. Amen. I want y'all to sow a seed towards our clothes. But get your tithing off in your hand. I need an envelope, please. Yes, ma'am. Oh, hey, this is Nakira's grandmother, and this is the great grandmother, and that's the mother. That's what I was going to say. Oh, okay, so you said this is the dad, mama. And mom, but look, that's three generations. That's three generations in this family here today. Come on, let's bless God. Four. That's four generations. Amen. We bless God. Nakira brought her family. Look at God. Nakira is one of our young folks. I'm very proud of her and what God is doing in her life. The youth was supposed, this is supposed to have been youth Sunday. But I guess they ain't want to do youth Sunday. So next month they got it. I need an envelope, please. We're going to get this 5K, y'all, I'm telling you. So you can give by Cash App. Our giving is dollar sign. Cash App, cash tag is dollar sign Embassy of Embassy Souls. You can also give by going to the Tiley app and looking up Embassy of Faith International. Or you can go download our app, our app. And when you download our app on your app store, Google Play Store or uh, the app store, you download it and look for embassy, the Embassy app and you can give from there. Or you could give by swipe, or you can give by cash or card. Amen. You got your seeds together. Let's stand to our feet all over the house. You're gonna have an envelope at the house. You're gonna have an envelope with the internet acting up. You're gonna have you're gonna have an envelope with um, with nothing on it that goes with my. It don't have a name on it. That's mine. Amen. Y'all get your seeds in your hand. Repeat after me. Say the seed that leaves my hand never. Leads my future. My seed in the seeds for me. For I am a delightful land. All the nations of the earth shall call me blessed. Here I go again, trusting God in my sowing. Father God, we pray to everyone that gave God that you would give increase, abundance, and overflow in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus Christ. And God, as we leave from this place, whenever in your presence, you lead God, direct us, shield and protect us until we come back again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for Adjutant General Scott being here. Come on, let's bless God for the man of God. If you got envelopes, if you got envelopes, here go the basket. Let somebody envelope. Amen. Here go the basket. You come to the basket. Come around to the basket. If you need an envelope. Amen. And we are gone from this place. Let's bless God for Adjutant General Scott being with being back in the house today. Wait a minute. Maybe I'll stop the music. Maybe I can. Let's bless God for Adjutant General Scott being back at home today. Amen. We bless God for him. Amen. But come on. Come on with your seeds from all over the house. And you are dismissed. Love on somebody and tell them that you love them. There's nothing they can do about it. Also, on this week, our fast. This week, we're not going to do white out. This week, we're going to get rid of the red meat. This week we get rid of red meat. So no pork, 
Is pork red meat? Look, they like, no, no, not pork. Pork ain't red. No, pork, steak, beef, red meat. Pork is good meat. It's good. Bacon, good. But listen, get rid of all red meat. You can come from wherever you are and sow your seeds. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, from wherever you are. Come on. Come on. Love on somebody. Listen, I need y'all here for Apostolic Congress. Come hang out. We're going to have food, fellowship. We got Pastor Erica. We got Bishop Foreman. So come on in. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.